If you're in your recovery journey, you may often ask yourself or wonder why the hell you are not getting to where you think you should be or wondering why something hasn't happened yet or you're not getting what you want out of your recovery. This is totally normal and an example of the part of our mind that tricks us into thinking we should give up or whatever it is we're doing is not worthy or we're not doing enough. My name is Mike. I'm the founder of Starts With Me and it's a consultancy that specializes in K-12 education and workplace mental health. I'm also a therapist and I'm also a human being in recovery. In in this video, I want to share with you three reminders that were incredibly important for me in early recovery and even still to this day, and three tips on things you can do consistently that are going to help you build a foundation for your recovery that will be able to withstand the inevitable punches in the face that life is going to throw your way. Make sure you subscribe, comment, etc., so that you can follow this channel and get other great tips and advice from wise people like Lucas and other people like us to help you on your recovery journey. Let me get the, the simple three reminders over quickly, which you're gonna hear all over the place. Number one, get a sponsor. We can't do this alone and we need the help of other, another human being. Number two, get your ass to meetings. These are going to be drilled in your head over and over and over and over and over. And the reason I'm adding to that is because they are important and they really do matter. Reminder number three, there is no finish line. You aren't trying to get to some magical place where you've recovered, so to speak. You're not gonna just all of a sudden wake up one day and say, oh, I don't have to practice these principles in all my affairs. It's a gift that we get to live and embody. And when you can remind yourself that it's not a destination, it's a journey, then sometimes you can reduce the angst of thinking you're not where you're supposed to be. So those are the three reminders that you can never be reminded of enough. And I always need a reminder myself. And the three tips I'm going to cover in this video are one, list of five things to do for the next day. Two, a mantra or a prayer or, or just a journal activity to get outside yourself and start practicing thinking about others in a kind way. Number three, the fundamental aspect of all of this is that you are doing this for you, not for anybody else. That has to be fundamental to your recovery. Remember, you can't Think your way into right action. You have to act your way into right thinking. And we know in the program, or in many programs, it's a program of action. So you must do things, which is why I suggested getting a sponsor, going to meetings. So find a time in the day that works for you. For me, doing it at nighttime is the best. And write down five things that you are going to do the next day. Now, in the beginning, it's more about just doing this rather than finding five life transforming activities that you're gonna do. When I was in early recovery, I literally would write down, I'm gonna call my sponsor, I'm gonna brush my teeth, I'm gonna drink a glass of water, I'm going to meditate or do my prayers, or I'm going to journal or call my mom or something. It's not necessarily what the outcome of the activity is, it's just getting in the process of saying you're going to do something and then doing it. I don't know about you, but personally, the person I let down the most was myself. So another part of this activity, um, the therapist side of me might say this is a behavioral activation or a behavioral intervention for people in recovery and the steps are full of psychological wisdom and spiritual wisdom and so you can Rest assured that the things that are suggested of you in recovery are also brought to people in all kinds of different therapeutic environments. So, we're writing these one to five things, I suggest five things to do the next day because we want to learn to take actions and to 
in some sense, uh, be accountable to ourself. Because again, as addicts or alcoholics or whatever word you want to use, we constantly let ourselves down. We constantly lie to ourselves. And for me, that led to a lot of self-hatred, a lot of self-criticism, and perhaps underneath all of that, really bad beliefs about who I was as a human. I'm not worthy of this, I'm not worthy of that. And of course I'm not because I'm unreliable and I never do what I say I'm gonna do and I keep hurting myself with substance use. So the practice of writing simple things down and then doing them starts to improve your relationship with yourself. It rebuilds the trust you have with yourself. And that is absolutely fundamental to you healing and believing that you're worthy of a good life and that you don't have to keep torturing yourself. So it can be anything, brushing your teeth, drinking a glass of water, calling your sponsor, going to a meeting, whatever it is, just get in the habit of trying to do it at the same time every day or any time throughout the day that you can. It also tends to help people with sleep because one thing that keeps people up at night is worrying about the next day. So getting things out of your head, that's number one. <laughs> Tip number two, you could consider this a journaling practice, a prayer practice, or in, in a Buddhist context, you could consider it loving kindness or metta would be the, the Pali word. So in early recovery for me, I kind of was a deer in headlights and I just did whatever my sponsor told me to do. And this is another one of those things. So number two, you're going to practice this for five people in your life. Now you can do it for people you're struggling or having irritations with, or you could do it for five people that you want to send grateful thoughts to, okay? And the mantra, the prayer, the journaling, simply just goes like this. I will use, uh, I'll use a person who's been crucial in my, my development. Jeremy, I pray for your health, happiness, and prosperity. Let's pick someone who I'm not so fond of. Um, I'll make up a name. <laughs> Bill, I pray for your health, happiness, and prosperity. And so you're gonna do that for five people. Now, you don't have to feel these things. Part of it, you'll also hear this idea of faking it till you make it. That's okay too. We just want to get into the habit of these things because they start to, in some ways, they do rewire our brain, but more importantly, they shift your orientation to people and the world around you. So you're gonna write five people's names down and you're gonna journal this thing for each and every one of them. And perhaps we'll, we'll have the you know, a document in the, in the show notes that you can just download it or whatever. Um, Cause I do have a lot of those things around. Person, I pray for your health, happiness, and prosperity. Notice how that feels when you do that for somebody else. Do you notice self judgment or do you notice, I don't want to send this person good vibes or I feel like an idiot doing this, whatever it is. That's, that's another maybe little extra tip. Just start to notice how you relate to these practices and what goes on inside your mind and, and how you may be judging yourself or criticizing yourself or the practice or all the stupid things you have to do because you want to feel better. Tip number three, you are doing this for you, not for anybody else. Another way you could think about it is anything you put in front of your recovery you are going to lose. So what does that mean? If I put my job in front of my recovery, that means I am going to, instead of going to meetings or calling my sponsor or doing my self-care practices, and I use that time and energy to complete a job task or to perhaps take on somebody else's responsibilities at work, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. That means my recovery practices and my own well-being is going to deteriorate and eventually 
I'll be fired or I'll lose that job because I'm using that as my goal as opposed to my own well-being. Another example might be if you're in a relationship with a partner right now and you start to put your partner's needs in front of your needs in recovery, then you're not going to become the person that you need to become in order to maintain healthy relationships. I mean, quite simply, I'm a dad of two kids, I'm married, and still to this day, my own well-being supersedes my need or my responsibility to them. Because if I'm not taking care of myself, then I can't be a dad, or I can't be a, a good dad, or the dad I want to be, and I won't be a good husband. I'll just be a miserable jerk walking around blaming them for my misery instead of taking responsibility for it myself. So I have to remember that my well-being comes first and it's not a self-centered thing, a selfish thing. It's actually the best way that I can be a kind and loving person to them and also to my family and to the world around me. Okay, and I got one bonus tip to share with you. It's a practice journal or a practice scorecard you could consider it as. And it will be linked in the show notes along with some of these other templates for you to use in your own practice or just as a, as a frame to help guide you. And the bonus tip, it's a beautiful way to document or just to list out the things that you do to help yourself. So you might on, on in the first list, you just might write, go to meetings, call my sponsor, do my five to-do lists, do my, my mantras for other people, go for a, a run, go for a walk. And then the next part of the practice sheet is just the days of the week. So you would check off which days you do which thing. And then the last column is, it's a self-reflection practice or self-awareness practice. And so it's, what are the thoughts, emotions, sensations, and difficulties with doing these practices or reasons why you chose not to do them? So if I have, I want to go to a meeting and I choose not to go to the meeting, I want to get clear and start to practice what am I thinking feeling, doing that leads me not to go to a meeting. And I, I might write something along the lines of, oh, today I was too tired and I just told myself, I don't need to go to a meeting today, I'll be okay. And I had a little bit of tension in my stomach and I felt frustrated and irritated and almost resentful because I kind of knew I should go, but I didn't want to go. Another example might be, for me, meditation is a tricky thing to do to settle my mind and just to sit the hell down and do something. You know, I'll check it off and then in the reflection column I'll say, oh, my mind was telling me, no, I just have one more email to write or I just need to go and eat dinner or, oh man, I need to check the score of the baseball game or the hockey game or whatever it is. And so just becoming familiar with all the excuses and all the noise and all the bullshit that gets on up here and the itty bitty shitty committee of why I don't need to be doing the things I know are good for me. So that's your bonus tip. I hope you found this video helpful. All these tips that I shared with you today were shared with me on my journey and I find them really helpful on a daily basis. So I hope that they also provide you with some guidance and some help on your journey. If you want to access any of the sheets that I reference in this video, go to the video description below and download them. Again, my name is Mike Stroh. I am the founder of Starts With Me, a mental health consultancy that specializes in workplace mental health and K-12 education. If you want to find out more about the work that I'm doing, please get in touch below through the website and we can help you develop a strategy for your workplace or your school or we can just come in and share our experience with your students and better yet if you want to join the state of mind festival which is an annual event that we've co-created with schools that's the bread and butter i'm also a therapist and if you think the things that i said today are helpful or you want to know more about how i can support you in your recovery journey or to help you with any other mental health problems please get in touch with me through the website startswithme.ca and there you can get all the other information. There's also a lot of good resources on there for people and I would love to hear from you. 
Right now in the COVID world, I am doing all my sessions online and I do work on a sliding scale if money or resources are a barrier for you at this time. Really all you need to do is reach out and get in touch and we can have that discussion. May the force be with you. Peace.